subledger and so that the subledger doesn't get thrown off, which is has its pros and cons, but it's actually pretty nice. Let's go into the uh, the reports again. Close up the hand boogie and go down to that was the customer balance summary. Let's go into the customer balance detail, right click and open that report in a new link. It's going to be on the right hand side. Let's do a range change up top. I'm going to do a custom range uh, 123123. Actually, a custom point in time. <laughs> and then we have our detail. So now we have the same information, but it's giving us the detail of the invoices. Now, basically, we have open invoices because those are the things that are outstanding that's creating the the amount that is that is due at this point in time. So again, a lot of this stuff, however, you might then simply go to the internal reports to use. So you might not use this one quite as much. So so then we've got the customer uh, balance summary. We did that. Here's the invoice list. If I right click and open up the invoice list and go into that one, let's close this up. So now we have our sorting of the invoices. I'm gonna switch it to the classic view uh, so I can see my date range up top going from 010123 to 123, and then I'm gonna run it. So now you've got your list of uh, invoices. So that's nice, but you might not need this quite as much because again, you can use the internal report. And if you wanted to filter, I could go into my, my balance sheet here, for example, and go into my accounts receivable. And I have my transaction detail uh, within here. And if I want to sort by transaction type, I could do that uh, using my filtering options and add a filter. And I want to sort by transaction type making it equal to and then an invoice invoice and then boom and filter it so i can get a similar you know report thusly uh as well so so there's just to show you that i'm going to go back on over exit and then we've got invoices and receive payment so this is both the increases and decreases if i open that link in a new tab let's check it out so we have uh, this here. Let's change the range. 010123, 1231. Uh, hold on. Still thinking. 123123. And there's that report. So I'll close that up. So this gives us the increases and decreases. This is kind of nice because now it's given us the. You would think that you can change the detailed report to show both the increases and decreases, not just the open invoices. Uh, but this report gives you that more detail because I'd like to see if I was looking at the detail report, not just the outstanding invoices, but possibly being able to tick off the payment and the invoice. So you can see them kind of matched out. So that's uh, might be a, actually a more useful report in some ways so that you can see those tied out. Although you might check that information internally as well on a per client or per customer basis. Let's go back to the first tab. We've got the open invoices. If I right click and open that one and check it out, we're going to say, okay, this is going to be, let's make it as of 123123 tab, run it. So this it looks similar to another, to the other report where we had the detail of the accounts receivable because it's giving us information by customer and then the open invoices for the customer, meaning the invoices that have been entered and not yet paid, which will result in the increase in accounts receivable 5281452, you would think would be the same number here on the balance sheet. So there's that one statement list. And th then just these unbilled items, just to show you what those mean. If I go into the unbilled items, we can see that in here, we have time charge charges that have happened, meaning We've, we've entered time into the system that we plan on pulling over into the invoice, but we have not yet pulled them over into the invoice. Therefore, this report doesn't actually reflect anything on the balance sheet or income statement, but rather is something that we need to do in the future. It's telling us, hey, you, if you create something for Amy's bird sanctuary, if I go over here and I say, boom, and make like an invoice for Amy's bird sanctuary, Amy's bird sanctuary, then it's I could pull this billable time in. 
because I've entered it, but I haven't yet invoiced it. That's the idea. So I'm going to close that out. Yes. And then we go to the two main reports. First would be the accounts receivable aging summary. Right click and open this one. The reason this one I would say is the main report that we would use is because most of the other reports, we already have a lot of that detail internally in what I would call the customer cycle or customer center. Over here, we have something added to that 123123. And that is that we have the past due columns up top. So this is the general format and we, we have the current amounts and we have still our customers on the left hand side. We have the amounts that have not yet been collected, which are current, which we're not too worried about at this point in time. And then the ones that are one to 30 days past due, 31 to 60 past due, 61 to 90 past due and 91 and over past due, and then our totals. So this report still gives us the total, which ties into what's on the balance sheet, but it breaks it out by how much is past due, which is important because uh, that will will tell us which clients and customers that we're skeptical about whether we're going to get paid. And that's going to tell us whether or not we want to do business with them, sell them anything further in the future. This is also the primary report used when we're trying to think about the likelihood of us collecting on the receivables.